Until now, we have studied relations and specific kind of relations where every input has a unique output, which were called functions. And then we also looked at inverse relations and relations that were functions. They had inverses and they were functions, if and only if you had a one-to-one -one function, where every input has a unique output and every output had a unique input. So of course, if you're a mathematician, you want to now play. What does that mean to play? Well, it means we want to create additional types of functions. To do that, how, where do we start? We start with finding objects that you already have studied and then use them to create our functions. What that means is you have to cultivate your imagination. In order to cultivate imagination, you have to be open to possibilities. How do we cultivate our imagination? We dig deep and we look at objects that we have studied before, like decimal numbers. And in decimal numbers, we can write them as powers of 10 and expanded form. So powers of 10, so that is our first clue. Our first function that we will study are power functions. So let's go see what they are. Let's make sure you know how to read this. This is 2.3 is the base and is the exponent, so 2.3 to power n. So let's start out with numbers bigger than 1, raise them to different powers, and see what we end up with. So let's set n equals 1. So we have 2.3 power n, which is 1 in this case, so 2.3. Let's make the n go bigger and bigger, 2, 3, 4, and look what happens to the numbers you can see that the numbers keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this tells us that if you have numbers bigger than 1 and you raise them to powers of bigger than 1, the numbers just keep on getting bigger and bigger. Let's change the 2.3 to 0.23 to power n. So we'll have 0.23 to power n, n is 1, so n 0.23. And now let's see what happens when we change the power. You'll see the numbers just keep getting smaller and smaller. So if you see that with different numbers like 1.8 to power n or 4.3 to power n or 0.8 to power n or 0.3 to power n, you will see our conclusion. No matter what number you pick, if it's bigger than 1 and you raise it to powers of bigger than 1, your numbers keep getting larger. And you can see the same thing happens with 4.3. On the other hand, if your number is between 0 and 1, and you start raising it to powers, the number actually gets even smaller than the original number. This observation is going to help us in order for us to study power functions. Power functions are when the base becomes a variable and the exponent is fixed. That's what power functions are all about. So in order to understand that, we need to know what happens when numbers that are inputted as base changes. So again, a quick summary. If you have a power of bigger than 1, and let's just pick 10, because we were working with decimal numbers, then you would pick powers of 10, or powers of 10 with a negative power, which means it's 1 tenth to a power, which is a number smaller than 1. So 1 tenth is a number smaller than 1 versus 10 is a number bigger than 1. And you can very easily see 10 to power 1 is 10, 10 squared is 100, 10 to the third is 1,000. So very quickly, the number will get bigger and bigger if you start changing the powers. Same thing here. If you have a base of 10 and you have a negative exponent, that means it's 1 over 10 to power n. In this case, you have 10 to negative 1 is 0.1, 10 to negative 2 is 0 0.01, and so on. You can see the numbers are smaller. All right, so let's take a look at formal definition of a power function. A power function is a function that is proportional to the quantity x to power n for any real number n. So f of x would basically mean some constant times x to power n where k can be any real number, and n is a fixed real number. So that's what power function is going to be. So we need to understand how these functions would look like. Do they have inverses? What is their domain? What is their range? 
Can we figure out how the graph of that function look like? So in order to explore the different kind of power functions, for now, let's just set k to 1. And then as we go forward, we can change the k and see what happens, maybe even in the next chapter. All right, so mathematical playing, which is learning by inquiry or posing questions, that's what we're going to focus on next. So please go to this particular website that you see here and move the slider n to explore how these functions look like. You can even change the f of x. So Desmos is a website where you can play for free. You can even create your own account and put in different values of f of x, raise it to different values of n, then keep the summary in mind, and then go look and see what the functions look like. Please do not fast forward to the next part of the video because I really want you to play. I know I'm not there to see if you're playing or not, but I really want you to try. So go ahead, pause the video here, go to this website, play, come to your own conclusions before jumping ahead. So when we asked you to play, you had a website where you just had to move the slider. When x is the base and x changes, that means all the base is going to be any numbers from negative infinity to infinity. You can plug in negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, and so on. We can plot more points later to investigate what is happening to the graph. But let's say the power was 1, then you have a straight line y equals x. If you have n equals 2, then you can see, again, look what happens here. 1, 1, 1 squared is 1. So 1, 1 is on both y equals x graph and also y equals x squared graph. 0, 0 is on both. And then what happens? All numbers squared are positive. So all of the numbers x that were negative in y equals x became positive, and so they flipped over. So this is the parabola shape. And again, when your x is bigger than 1, 1.1, 1 1.5, 2, 2 squared. And so you can see how those numbers are bigger. And therefore, this graph, when x is bigger than 1, is above the line y equals x. But between 0 and 1, the graph is below y equals x. All right, let's see what happens when n is 3. When n is 3, again, something similar is happening. Numbers between 0 and 1 are below the y equals x line and above the y equals x line when x is bigger than 1. On the other hand, when x is negative, between 0 and negative 1, when you take the numbers and raise it to the third power, those numbers are bigger than these numbers here. So that's why the graph is a little bit higher than y equals x. But then at negative 1, negative 1, the graphs meet. And then uh, cubing numbers that are below negative 1 will give you even more of a negative number. And so therefore, these numbers are smaller than the numbers on the y equals x graph. Let's see what happens when n is 4. It's similar to the parabola shape, but a little bit wider on the base because these numbers raised to fourth power are even smaller. And you can see that, like for example, if I bring the x squared graph again, you can compare. You can see the x squared graph is between y equals x and y equals x to the fourth. So even power, it looks like, gives you parabolic kind of shape. What happens when n is 5? This is similar to the graph of x cubed that you saw. Let's bring the x to the 3 graph again, and we can see how that x to the 3 graph is a little bit higher than x to the 5 graph between 0 and 1, but then lower than x to the 5 when x is bigger than 1. So you can start to see a pattern here that when n is even parabolic shape, when n is odd, it's like a squiggly, like a cubic. And so you can see even power x to the 6, x to the 7, x to the 8, x to the 9, x to the 10. So you 
already have some sense of what these powers are doing to the graph. So power functions x to power n, where n is either 1, 2, 3, all the way up, fluctuates between parabolic shape or like a squiggly. And you just go back and forth depending on whether n is even or odd. Let's explore a little more. So we already saw that y equals x was a line. So let's get our points for y equals x graph. So once you have the coordinates for y equals x, and then we connect these points, you have a straight line. So that's the graph of y equals x. Do you remember how to find the inverse of the function? You write y equals the original function, which in this case was x. Interchange x and y, which will give you x equals y. So it didn't really change the graph. So y equals x is its own inverse. This function is called an identity function. All right, now that we have an identity function, do you remember how when we were looking at inverse functions, we also made a big stink about how inverse function is not the same as the reciprocal function. So what would be the reciprocal function of y equals x? It would be y equals 1 over x. So let's explore how that graph looks like. So if you want y equals x, we'll have to make some table of values. And you can see that 1 over negative 2 will give you negative half. 1 over negative 1.5 or negative 2 thirds. Y equal, uh, x equals negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1 is the same. When, when you had negative 2, you had negative half. So as your x coordinates go towards negative infinity, you'll see that these numbers will remain negative. 1 over negative number is negative, but 1 over a large number is small. So this is as if we were having like 1 over negative 10, 1 over negative 100. So these numbers will keep getting closer and closer to 0 from below. On the other hand, when negative numbers are between negative 1 and 0, look what happens. 1 over negative 0.5 is negative 2. 1 over negative 0.1 will be negative 10. And so you can see that these numbers are going to shoot to negative infinity. Similarly, 1 over 1 is 1. When you have a half, 1 over a half is 2. 1 over a tenth is a 10. 1 over a hundredth is a 100. Whereas if you go on the other side when x is very large, 1 over 2 would be half, 1 over 3 would be a third, 1 over a 10 would be 0.1. So these numbers are getting smaller and smaller. And so let's, so let's connect these and see how that would look. So you can see that we have that 1 over x, the reciprocal function. So that means when x is to negative 1 power, what are we getting? We are getting an asymptote, a vertical asymptote at 0, x equals 0, and also at y equals 0. And this is where our observation of what happens to numbers when you raise them to different powers was very important. So let's take a look and see what we have so far. So if you look at power functions of the type x to power n, let's just keep our n to whole numbers for now. Then the first function, when n is 0, we'll call it the constant function, or f of x equals 1 which means no matter what the input, output is always 1. So that would be our horizontal line here that you see. Domain would be negative infinity to infinity. Range is just 1. And it does not pass a horizontal line test, so it would not be 1 to 1. When n is 1, we have f of x equals x called a linear function or a monomial of degree 1. So no matter what the input, the output is always itself, so that will be a straight line y equals x. Domain would be negative infinity to infinity. Range would be negative infinity to infinity. And it is a one-to-one -one function because it passes the horizontal line test.
In addition, we can see that its inverse is going to be itself. And the domain is going to be for the inverse function also negative infinity to infinity. And range will be negative infinity to infinity. We also saw what happens when you have function f of x equals x to power 2, 4, 6, and so on. So x to power 2n, where n is counting number, we have that all of these curves have 0, 0 on them, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. And as x to the power, the power is larger, gets flatter, closer to 0, 0. And then bigger than 1 coordinates are taller or higher. And less than negative 1 also becomes taller. And then domain, negative infinity to infinity, range is 0 to infinity, since anything to even power is a positive number or 0. x, y intercept 0, 0. It does not pass horizontal line test, so it's not 1 to 1. And the end behavior, both left and right hand ends are facing up. For our power functions, we already looked at what happens when the power is 1, which is just a straight line. Here we're focusing on what happens when n is a counting number, and you have x to power 2n plus 1. So we're focusing on x to the third, x to the five, x to the seven, and so on. In this particular case, we will have this cubic kind of shape. And again, domain for all of them would be negative infinity to infinity. Range is negative infinity to infinity. All of these curves will have points 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1 on them. And you can see it passes horizontal line test. So it will be one to one functions. And for end behavior, the left hand end is facing down. Right hand end is facing up. So that is what we saw for even and odd power functions. Let's take a look at what happens if you have a constant k in front of some of these graphs. So if you look at f of x equals 3x squared instead of just x squared, and let's say g of x is 1 third x squared. One thing we can do to figure out what these graphs would look like is to make a table again. So we see here x is negative 2, negative 1, and so on. Here is our x squared points for y equals x squared. So 3 times x squared would be 3 times negative 2 squared, or 12. So you can plot all of these points, and same thing with the 1 third. And you can see the result here in the graph. You can see that. So the graph of g of x equals 1 third x squared is vertically compressed and below y equals x squared, whereas y equals 3x squared got stretched vertically compared to the x squared. All of these graphs are compared to x squared. So the constant in front keeps the same shape. So the domain and range both remain exactly the same. It's just whether it's stretched vertically or compressed vertically. If you take a look at a negative 3x squared and negative 1 third x squared, you will see similar results, except because of the negative, all the y coordinates become negative, except for the 0, 0. And again, you can see. It's so it's reflected across the x-axis. And then in addition to that, you have a vertical compression or a vertical stretch. So you can see what the constant in front of a power function will do.